Love is God and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it because God is the foundation of love. Praise the Lord, friends, and how are you doing? It's good to have you guys here with us. I'm very blessed to be with you, family. My name is John Nathan Owara. I work with Scripture Union Uganda, and I'm happy to be right here speaking to you about a few things. I am not alone. I am with Caesar. Caesar Okulu, right in the heart of Lango and Acholi. All right, well, thank God so much for this opportunity. And right now, before we proceed, we want to say a word of prayer. And I'll ask Caesar to pray as we open up this conversation. Let's pray. Loving Father, we bless your name because you are the great I am. We thank you, God, for you know the beginning from the end. You know everything about us. We thank you for this time that we are going to learn about you and your connection with us. May you guide us. May you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Caesar. It's good to have you with me here. It's How a is Acholi? <laughs> Acholi is blessed. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful place to be in. Uh -huh. It's also a place to visit. All right. Yes. Scripture in your northern region is where we work, and we are happy to be part of this conversation once again. Today, we shall be talking to you about four steps to a new life. Four steps to a new life. And uh, like we said, there are four steps. Many people would want to have a new life. Many people don't have good life, but they have never taken the time to know which are those steps to a new life. Families are breaking, students are failing, lives are, people are hurting. They want to have a new life, but they never know. How can I have a new life? As Christians, we bring this conversation. Four steps to a new life. Caesar, four steps to a new life. The first step is to know that God loves you. That's very, very important. God loves you. Have you been in any opportunity, uh, gotten an opportunity in a time when you know that God really loves you? Or have you been, let's start with this, have you been in a conversation or in, in a setting where you have not felt loved before? And that happens uh, often. Mm -hmm. We are living in a world where there's love versus uh, hate, but above all, love always turns. And then we're looking for love everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, have I ever been in a place where uh, I felt unloved? Mm -hmm. Yes, a few couples, one or two there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know that God loves you? Perfectly well. How do you know that God loves you? Just right now. We are enjoying free hair mm -hmm. in this beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. uh, that is one example of God's love for me mm -hmm. and you. Yes. Many people are paying for oxygen, but for me, we are breathing freely. I have not seen you count any cash to pay <laughs> God. <laughs> I like that one. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, and we would open and read it. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 16, and the Bible says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What does this mean to you? The first step is to know that God loves you. What does this mean to you? Uh, to, to me, like I'm looking at the context of the world, some people feel like when God says, for God so loved the world, some other people think it is only the believers but this call is to the entire universe that uh, you and me god loves me wherever religion you're in but god loves you that you be in a relationship with the lord jesus christ and then when you connect with jesus you automatically become the child of god and that is a wonderful privilege that you become a prince or a princess of a extra of a, of a, a glorious kingdom where God himself is your father, but at the same time, the king. There's a student watching. There's a parent watching. There are families that are watching and they feel unloved. They feel hated. Someone is living with a stepmother, living with a st maybe a relative, and they feel the relative is punishing them, overworking them. They feel their boss hates them. What would be your response in regard to knowing that God loves them? 
God. God's love dependent on uh, my relatives or people hating me? <laughs> Amazingly, no. Because <laughs> God's love uh, is uh, internal. Mm -hmm. The first place is not dependent on emotion. Mm. That uh, uh, Jesus Christ, if we are to define love and then we saw him going on the cross, bleeding, wearing a crown of thorns for you and me, that means it is beyond emotion, it is beyond feeling. But this love is uh, standing up to do the good in a mid -east, in a place where people are doing wrong. Like for example, my brother, my sister there, you're being mistreated, you're being manhandled locally actually. Mm -hmm. What do you do in response to that hate, in response to that agony? The only solution is love. Love, which is, love covers multitudes of sins. Multitude of wrong things. Wrong. <laughs> when someone wrongs you, you still love them. And then, that's a difficult one. Because uh, uh, our master, that uh, for God so loved the world, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. He, he, Jesus said that this love, you also must love your enemy. That's a hard one. And that is the truth. <laughs> so the first step is to know that God loves you. That love of God propels us to love the unloved. Okay. The second step, dear people who are watching, dear viewers, you're watching. The first step is to know that God loves you. The second step is you cannot save yourself. We're talking about the four steps to a new life. The second step is you, can you cannot not. save yourself. Uncle Caesar, read for us Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You cannot save yourself. What does the Bible say? Romans 6, verse 23 is a common verse, but in this is actually the last verse of chapter 6. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you cannot save yourself. The wages of sin is death. A wage... A wage is a payment, like you work the whole day, at the end of the day, they pay you. Mm -hmm. So it's not a salary, it's called a wage. Every day you work daily or you do work in a specific time, like a day, they pay you a wage. Um, now when they pay you a wage, that's the same, the same way you also paid <laughs> for, for sinning. Sin, Uncle Caesar, sin is anything you think, mm, mm, mm. you say, or you do that does, that not, does not please, please God. God. Again, sin, sin is, is anything, anything that you, you think, think, you say, say or do, do that does not please God. So when you do what does not please God, you get a wage. And that yeah. wage is eternal death in hell. So the second step is you cannot save yourself it's because we are sinners. There are many wrong things we do every day. What are some of the things that we think about which does not please God? Um, interestingly, what is currently trending among the youth mm -hmm. is uh, phonography. Phonography. And yeah. masturbation. Whoa. It's killing young people out there, boys and girls, for those who are watching, even adults. They think about it, then they do it. Majorly phonography, most people think it doesn't, you know, people like it's something you do behind the curtain. And at the end of the day, it is hitting you silently. It is sin. And you can't talk about it out there. So what, what other thing do we do that don't please God? Some people may, may be thinking, mm, me, I don't, pornography is not my thing. Sexual immorality is not my thing. But what other thing? Uh, do we do that does not please God, that amounts to sin? Imagine a child there watching, and you are a parent. You're sending your child to bring water, and a child just, mm. even at the end of the day, when a child brings the water, it's not from the heart. It, there's a full, full of grudge in it. That means there's a seed of disobedience. So when you don't obey your parents, when you don't obey your bosses, when you don't obey also your colleague, but above all, yourself. You don't obey God. God is not supreme. Is you, if you don't obey God, you're sinning. You're sinning. But then also there's that element. There are standards that you set for yourself. Do you follow them? So the first step is know that God loves you. The second step is you, you cannot, cannot save, save yourself. yourself. 
And because you cannot save yourself, it takes us to the third step. And Uncle Caesar, what is the third step? You need to repent. What is repentance? <laughs> what do you understand by repentance? <laughs> repentance is acknowledging that your actual is a sinner. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you need a savior mm -hmm. to redeem you. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this repentance, you're saying, um, I'm done with this. Uh, I know I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. Now I, I want to take a new direction. Change of mind, uh -huh. change of heart, change of direction. Exactly. That is repentance. And it takes the word of God mm -hmm. to direct, like uh, our our theme mm -hmm. for our 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 verse for Scripture Union, yes. Psalms one nineteen one zero five. Your word is a lamp to, to my, my feet, feet and a light to my path. Exactly, the word of God leads us to repentance. So the scripture for uh, you need to repent. What is, uh, what is the scripture for? What a guiding scripture for us. Uh, it is, uh, let's check from Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Okay. Luke 13, verse 3 tells us something. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you repent, let, let us read from uh, the scripture here. Luke chapter number 13, verse uh, 3. Okay. It says, I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I tell you, no. But unless you repent, yes. you too will all perish. Yes. This is NIV. Unless you repent, you too will, will perish. Also perish. Yeah. Perishing is, uh, is eternal death for us as Christians. Perishing is eternal death. Friends, if we do not repent, we will perish. And that's very important. Step number three, you need to repent. And the, and the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, that mm, mm, the mm. goodness of God leads you to repentance. to repentance. It is the goodness of God that leads you and I to repentance. So you need to repent. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to help you. Amen. You cannot save yourself. Four steps to a new life. Amen. The third step is you need to repent. Uncle Caesar, the fourth step. But that part before we go to the fourth step, the central point here is God is good. And then because he's good, he will lead you to repentance. He doesn't want you to perish. Perish means you're dying beyond repair. You know what normally say? What normally say? God is good? All the time. All the time? God is good. Step number four. <laughs> Confession to salvation. Confession. What is that to you? Confession. <laughs> Confession is from the word confess, which is uh, speaking with your mouth. Uttering. Acknowledging what is in your heart. Mm -hmm. That is believing in your heart that uh, something is good. But in this context, we are talking about uh, salvation. So salvation done, has only one object. So you've done something bad, according to step three. Uh -huh. Then at step four, you acknowledge it uh -huh. by speaking. And you need Jesus Christ. Now you're acknowledging that I need Jesus Christ into my life to be my Lord and savior most people in this context take jesus as savior yeah. the other element of lord people normally yeah, begin <laughs> <laughs> but you need him as your lord and savior romans 6. so it's important uh, that we take it that we confess to salvation yes romans 10. so romans uh, so point number four confession to salvation yes 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 four steps to a new life Step number one, know, know that, that God, God loves, loves you. you. Step number two, you cannot save yourself. Step number three, you, you need, need to, to repent. Exactly. Step number four, confession, confession to salvation. salvation. Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10 has something for us. And uh, I will read it. It says that if you confess with your mouth, with what? With your Mouth. Not with your head. <laughs> not, not, not in the head and you say, mm, yeah, I get saved by, I got saved by, okay, and in my head, it doesn't work like that. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, mm, okay, mm, mm, mm. and shall believe in your heart, not in your liver, mm. that God has raised him from, from the, the dead, dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth, for with the heart, mm. man believes, unto righteousness, mm. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So with the heart you believe that God sent Jesus to die on the cross to give us a relationship with God, back with him, to restore a broken relationship. Mm. After mm. believing in your heart, then you confess with your mouth. 
What does this mean to you, Uncle Caesar? Confession uh, leads to salvation. Mm -hmm. Confession, uh, this one you're confessing Jesus Christ. When you confess him as your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, that means accepting Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior is a must, actually. You don't need to bargain about this. It's a, it, is, a, it is for your own good. It is. It's for your own good. It's of life and death. People have been debating, can I get saved now, I think. And then, uh, like we said, you cannot save yourself. Mm -hmm. It is out of conviction. The Spirit of the Lord, that we say, is the goodness of the Lord, leads you to repentance. repentance. And now, the Lord might be leading you right now mm -hmm. to repentance, that you need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be it you are an adult, you are youth, or you are a child. This is an opportunity for you to be saved. And that's very important because at this level, at this where we are right now, we conclude by saying four steps to a new life. Yes, Step yes, number yes. one, know that God loves you. God loves you. And that's very important. Mm, mm, that God mm. sent his son to die on the cross for our sin, to connect us with him again. Step Amen. number two. You cannot save yourself. True. You cannot save yourself and you need Jesus to save you. Step number three. You need to repent. Repentance is change of mind, change of attitude, change of heart, change of direction from the wrong world to, to Jesus Christ. And step number four. Confession to salvation. You need to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As we bring this to a close, I want to ask you, if you've never given your life to Jesus and you fail today, I want to start a new life with the Lord Jesus, no matter how bad your life is. It's an opportunity for you. And I will ask you to bow your head wherever you are and give your life to Jesus. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be, be saved. saved. That's Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Amen. I will repeat that. The Bible says that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be, saved. be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Thank you so much for receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. We want to quickly help you. There are six steps for a new believer to walk mm. with the Lord. There are six steps. You've just given your life to Jesus and you're asking, what does this mean for me? To be able to understand this, there are six steps that can help you. And we shall use the left hand. There are six of them. The first step, which is the biggest thumb, is go to church. Go to a Bible believing and teaching church. Go to a church where they teach the Bible. Where they open the Bible and read. That is a good church because the Bible is the word of God. So number one, which is the foundation of all Christianity and all the foundation of a new life is go to a Bible believing and teaching church. Step number two, which is the pointer finger, is read the Bible. The Bible warns you when you're doing something wrong. The Bible gives you direction. When you need direction, many times we ask and say, go that direction, go that direction. So the Bible gives you direction. Mm -hmm. Get a Bible for yourself in a language and translation that you understand best and read it for yourself. Step number three, which is the longest of all the fingers and probably one of the most difficult ones is obey what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. When the Bible tells you to respect your father and mother, please obey it. Okay. To obey is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. To obey God is better than to sacrifice anything. So obey what the Bible says. That is very, very important. Obey what the Bible says. When the Bible tells you to forgive, please obey it. Number four, 
is pray every day. Prayer is talking to God, telling God how you feel. Prayer is telling God the deep things and the deep issues of mm -hmm. your life. That is prayer. Speak to God like the way I'm speaking to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Don't speak to God the way other people do. Prayer is a conversation, Caesar, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm talking to you. So tell God how you feel. You might never see him, but sure, he is with you. So tell, uh, pray, tell God about yourself. The last one, I mean the fifth one, mm. is what we have shared with you. Witness to other people. Go and share this same message with other people. Share the good news. And then, we have, we have a f the sixth one, which is the, the palm, the palm, go for fellowship. It's the foundation of all of this. Go for fellowship. Once a week, if you are in a scripture union, if, a, if you're in a school and the school has scripture union club, join the scripture union club. So go to church, read the Bible, obey what the Bible says, pray every day, tell others about Jesus, and join a fellowship. If you're, in a, if you're a student, join the Scripture Union mm -hmm. Fellowship. Clap. God bless you so much. I'll ask Uncle Caesar to close in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the souls who have just received you right now across the world. We thank you for them because your word is clear that anyone who confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior is given a new spirit, the Holy Spirit, as a guarantee, as a shield into this new life. We thank you for their sins are taken away. We thank you and we welcome them into this glorious kingdom, the kingdom full of love, the full of joy, full of kindness. We pray for everyone who have listened to us, who have watched us out there, that Lord, they'll receive the blessing that comes from you, the blessing that you have already promised long, long time ago and that is there up to now. Pray that, Lord, you usher us into the world to change lives, to transform nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 From Caesar and I, we love you. We love you. Bye-bye. See you again. Love is God, and God is love. A relationship without God is as good as using it, because God is the foundation of love.